How's it going everybody? Thank you so much for checking out my channel. This is my first official upload as Brenny FB and doing fingerboard related content. If you haven't followed me from Instagram, I'd like to take a second to introduce myself so you can get to know me a little bit better. My name is Brendan. You can also call me Brenny. I live in Pennsylvania and I've been fingerboarding since 2017 and I've been playing with tech decks since I was a kid. In my past, I've gone through pretty much every stage of fingerboarding knowledge, whether it's not even knowing that wooden decks in professional companies exist, to being, you know, a little into it, knowing about brands like Teak and Black River, those larger up brands, to now where I feel like um, I know a lot of brands as they come up, as they go down. Fingerboarding, much like skateboarding, has a bunch of different brands. Some of them are really good and you should send your money to. Some of them, should probably be avoided and my reason for making content on YouTube is for that exact reason you know for skateboarding you can start off with a $20 Walmart board and then when you want to get into more professional side of skateboarding or at least gear wise you might not know where to look just because of how many companies there are and how many different products there are fingerboarding is actually the exact same way you can start with a $3 tech deck and make it all the way up to 130 plus dollars so you find yourself really enjoying tech decks playing with tech decks or you've even been introduced to the professional side of fingerboarding, but don't really know where to look, I want to help you. I want to show you the brands that are good, the brands that deserve the recognition, and then some of the brands that you might want to stay away from. Also something I want to do that's going to be really fun is trying out stuff that I haven't even tried yet, and posting review content, letting you know how I feel about it, testing it out, and giving you my overall rating of it. In the seven years, give or take, that I've been in the fingerboarding community, or at least had the knowledge of professional fingerboarding brands, I've tried out a lot of stuff. I've tried out stuff that was new, just to see how it performed, and I really like doing that. I've been posting a lot of like short review stuff on my Instagram, and I wanted to go into more long-form content, so that's what this YouTube is gonna be for. We're actually going to get started immediately with one of my favorite companies that I absolutely can recommend. If you're a little newer to fingerboarding and haven't messed around so much with things outside of Tech Deck, you might be aware of the plastic ramps that Tech Deck uses. Fingerboarding takes that to a completely different level. You've got ramps that are made completely out of wood, you've got ramps that are made of concrete, you've got the whole nine. It's very much like actual skateboarding. And the company that I'm going to be touching on today specializes in concrete obstacles but also makes decks and some 3D printed stuff. That company is Brewski Builds. At this point, I think I have five, maybe six obstacles from Brewski and a deck. And honestly, Brewski makes some of the best concrete obstacles in the game. So I wanted to start on a high note, touching on this company and just showing you what I have and some clips associated with it to really show you the versatility the quality of them. So we're gonna take a look at everything I have. I'm gonna give you the names, I'm gonna give you the prices, we're gonna go over everything today, and I'm also gonna post some clips at the end of the video to just show you what I can do on a fingerboard if this is your first time seeing my content and my fingerboarding, and also just to show you what you can do on these because a lot of them are very versatile and they give you a bunch of different ways to use them. So we're gonna go back inside, move over to my desk, not where I do my fingerboarding, but to be honest, it has the best lighting in my home. So we're gonna move over to the desk. I'll show you the obstacles I have, go over the names, the price, and all of that. Since I have so many obstacles from them in my collection, I'm not necessarily going to consider this a review because I've already skated these. So I'm gonna stop talking here. Let's get inside and take a look at some cool obstacles. All right, so we're back at my desk. This is my work desk. It's not actually where I fingerboard. I fingerboard out in my kitchen, but I'll be completely candid with you. The lighting is the best in here. I'm gonna stay in here for the breakdowns and going over the obstacles one by one. For Brewski, I have about five obstacles and a deck. We're gonna break all of them down. I'm gonna give you the names, I'm gonna give you their prices, and my overall opinion of them. While Brewski themselves specialize in concrete, they also do make some plastic obstacles. The first one I'm gonna show you is a 3D printed obstacle. If you know me, I'm not a big fan of 3D printed obstacles, but this one actually is very good. We're gonna be taking a look at the sand barricade from Brewski. This sand barricade is $30. It is a 3D printed object. One of the reasons why I wanted to pick this up is not only because of the fact that it has the sand inside of it, um, but I wanted to try out a 3D printed obstacle because all the other ones I've tried I haven't been a huge fan of. So because Brewski makes such quality stuff, I wanted to give this a try and I actually ended up really liking it. One of the things that is a positive towards 3D printed obstacles is they're very smooth and you don't have to wax them. Some concrete obstacles, if you're unfamiliar with waxing, they are a little more harsh 
and don't grind out of the box as well as plastics. Some stuff you actually do have to wax, just like legitimate skateboarding. 3D printed obstacles, however, because of the filament and it being made of plastic, it slides a lot better. One of my favorite things about this obstacle is not only the fact that it has actual sand inside of it, but also it has little notches here and an indentation here. So if you wanted to purchase multiples, you could link them together and make a longer obstacle. You could do some kind of skate park with some immersive barrier kind of stuff. It's really cool and very versatile. And it's some things that you're gonna notice with Brewski is that not only do you have like single use of the obstacle, but you can link them together or do things like that to make longer obstacles or a park. And that is such an awesome thing. This specific obstacle, the only complaint that I would have is that if you look at the bottom here and you see these circles, they're actually non-skids. So that when you set this on your countertop, when you go to skate it, it doesn't move because it's going to be plastic on whatever smooth surface you're skating on. And sometimes they slide. If you also notice, I had to cut out my own, which are these longer rectangle ones, because the circular ones weren't enough. And even one of the circular ones on the bottom here came off. So that is literally the only negative. And in my opinion, I'm, I'm reaching a little bit. That's such a small thing. And it is a very easy fix. It's not like this thing came in some horrible condition or I had to do something to actually make it work. We're talking about a couple of pieces of grip tape that I had to cut out and just put to the bottom. Some people also use sticky tack or something along those lines, or even just tape the thing down. For me, I like to use the non-skids. Out of 10, I would give this a seven. Personally, just because of it being 3D printed, I'm not a huge fan of plastics. I like my ramps a lot more realistic. So plastic type stuff like this, I'm not a massive fan of, but it is still a great obstacle and something I definitely recommend as a starter. The next obstacle we're gonna be talking about is concrete. And we're gonna be talking about the Disco Barrier. Disco Barrier is $55. It is concrete. It is very, very sturdy, very bulky, and honestly kind of heavy. The thing that I really like to compliment Bruski on when it comes to their concrete obstacles is the slide. I have never waxed this thing. I've honestly never waxed any of my Brewski obstacles. And for concrete, that's really impressive. It just shows how smooth he's able to get it. And with this one, it's very versatile. There's a lot of different things that you can do on it. You'll see on my clips in the end, just a couple like up and down kind of things. It's a really fun obstacle and something really cool. This is a signature ramp from John Cowart, which if you're not familiar with John Cowart, he actually runs a deck company called Cowply, which is an awesome company very great name in this community. And you can tell because it has that really cool C there with the hand and that's Cowplies logo. As for negative feedback with this, I honestly have none. Um, the same issue that I had previously with the sand barricade does not apply for this one. If you look in the corners, there are those clear non-slides and they work amazingly. This obstacle is just very heavy. So even if there was no non-skids on it, it wouldn't move around just because of how heavy this thing is. But it's very versatile. You can use it as a ledge on this side or a ledge on this side. You can use it as a mani pad or you can do the up and down. And it's really fun. I honestly highly recommend this one. It is a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones we're gonna be talking about today. But I think with the versatility of this, it's very worth it. Rating, I would give this a nine out of 10. The only reason why I honestly wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 is just because $55 for a singular concrete obstacle to some people might seem a little bit expensive to start out with for some people. So this would be a 10 if it was maybe like 10 bucks cheaper. The next concrete obstacle we're gonna be talking about is a collab between Brewski and one of my favorite deck companies, Knife, the Knife Barrier. Now this is absolutely massive for a barrier. Normally, if you even compare it to the size of the sand barricade, it's almost twice the size. This thing is very much a barrier on steroids. This was uh, $40, and I think this is an amazing obstacle. You can't go wrong with a barrier, but then when you have a barrier of this size, the amount of snap in your ollie that you need to actually get to the top of this, it really trains you to work on your ollies. It really trains you to snap your ollies harder and higher. You have the vert on the side, so you also can use it to vert up to it, or vert off of it. I have a couple clips at the end that you'll see where I get onto it as a grind and then drop in the side of the barricade. It's a very fun obstacle, probably one of my favorites in my collection just because it is also a collab between two of my favorite companies. 
but I definitely recommend this one. Something that I spoke about a little bit with the sand barricade and the versatility of the obstacles is that this one does have a notch here and then a little nub here. So you can link them together and make a longer one. Also, if you look, you can see purposeful imperfections to give it that really immersive and realistic look. And I just, that's amazing. I love that. This obstacle, I give a nine out of 10. The only thing that uh, stops me from rating it out of 10 is because of the height just being, it, it's very high. For people like me, that's a lot of fun. For newer fingerboarders, this actually might be a very difficult obstacle to use, but I still very much recommend it. The next set of obstacles that we're gonna be talking about is, like it is, a set of obstacles. And it's right behind me just because it's a little bit harder to hold altogether but it is called the Stack Series. The Stack Series actually has a variance of prices because there's a bunch of different kinds, but it ranges anywhere from $5 for a specific piece to $19 for an entire set. I have a variance of sets just because I bought this used. What makes the Stack Series especially interesting is because it comes with a 3D printed connector piece and each piece of the Stack Series has these little holes here. And if you put two and two together, you can snap them in and you'll be able to create multiple different obstacles. So the versatility with this one is absolutely amazing. You could have that little bank here connect into something like this, this little wavy ledge. So you have a bank up to the wavy ledge. The amount of possibilities are almost endless. The singular thing that I would say that is a negative about this is honestly me nitpicking, but the feeling of going from concrete to the 3D printed is a little weird to get used to. But honestly, that's just me being picky. Everything else about this set is awesome. The versatility is so cool. There's a library set. There's um, a couple different sets that you can have. And all of them have different style pieces that you can link together. And it's so cool. It is such an awesome piece. Due to the stack series being pretty much unlike any other obstacle set that I've seen, I give this a 10 out of 10. Even with the weirdness between going from the 3D printed to the concrete, which like I said, is just me being really nitpicky and trying to find negatives, which that's something you'll notice with a lot of these obstacles is I am trying to find negatives. That's how you know that Brewski is that good is that negatives aren't apparent. But the versatility with this series, the imagination, how creative that you can get with this, the stack series is honestly unlike any other concrete obstacle I have seen. So this is a 10 out of 10, 100%. Last obstacle we're gonna be talking about is honestly probably one of my favorites in my collection. We have the Aero Vista Ledge. The Aero Vista Ledge is $50. It is a replica of an actual ledge in California. And that's honestly one of the biggest selling points for me. I love to have skate spots in fingerboarding that resemble skate spots in actual skateboarding. I think that's such a cool thing, really adds to the immersiveness of fingerboarding. And that rates it really highly for me. Another reason why I also rate this very highly is it is just a buttery ledge. There is no need for wax for this thing. I literally waxed it one time just because I wanted to see how much more slippery it would get if I waxed it. And honestly, it hasn't made much of a difference. This obstacle is just that buttery. And if you look with Brewski, you see those imperfections that are purposefully put there to give it more of a realistic experience. This one does not need stoppers because of the weight. I've never had this thing slide out on me. It is a very heavy obstacle. I could not recommend this one more. I give this one a 10 out of 10. I can't even find a negative thing to say about this. It is one of the best ledges. And while it's really simplistic, honestly, in some ways, just makes it even better. You know, some companies go really fancy, really complex with their obstacles. This is very straightforward. It's literally just a ledge, but it's so perfectly done and functions so well that I have nothing negative to say about this. So if you are gonna take anything away from this, the number one obstacle I recommend picking up from Brewski is this Aero Vista Ledge. This thing is incredible. The last piece of Brewski product that we're going to be talking about today is a Brewski deck. Now this Brewski deck was actually gifted to me from Brewski just because of how much money I actually spent there, which is pretty sad, but it's kind of the, the regular for me if you know how much fingerboarding stuff I have. But if you take a look at this board, it actually has the BB Co embossed into the deck, which is absolutely stunning. 
This is a 29 millimeter. The only negative that I could potentially give about this board and not so much the board as Brewski's decks in its entirety is Brewski pretty much only makes small decks. So 29 millimeter, I think he has some 26s. So he makes very small boards. And for people like me, I don't use 29 millimeter too much. It's very small. This is a very skinny board, very small. I'm not a huge fan of this uh, size width wise, but everything about this deck is great. I just wish that they had some wider ones. So that's gonna be all I have for Brewski. Brewski Builds is one of the best concrete companies in fingerboarding. And I can say that pretty confidently. Funny thing is, is I haven't even begun to make a dent in the catalog that Brewski has. There's a bunch of different concrete obstacles. There's a bunch of different plastic stuff. There's things like the Target Ball, which is literally a concrete replica of the Target, like the red Target Ball, which is super cool. In the description below, I'm gonna link their Instagram and their website. I highly recommend you check out their stuff. If you're looking for a good quality obstacle, for a medium price, I would say some of this stuff reaches a little expensive, but when you take into account the amount of time, the amount of materials, and everything that goes into a concrete obstacle, it really just makes sense. So I'm gonna link all of his info down below. I highly recommend you take a look and maybe get yourself something nice. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you're coming over from Instagram and subscribing and watching this content right off the rip, just know I'm so thankful for you and I appreciate you so much. The fingerboarding community is one of the best communities ever, hands down. And I'm so stoked that not only do I have the time and the ability to make this content, that I have people supporting me right off the bat. If you found me directly from YouTube search bar, I'm so happy you're here. If you would like to subscribe and like the video, leave a comment, let me know how you feel. I'd appreciate that very much. If not, that's also totally cool. I might be doing the outro, but I promised you I was gonna be posting some clips along with the video. So here's some clips of me using these obstacles, some of my favorites that I own and I hope you enjoy them. And I hope you have a great day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in.